How to prepare for a trip. Whether you're traveling to the next town over or to the other side of the world, careful planning goes a long way toward ensuring your trip is a success. The right preparation helps you avoid potential disasters, such as having your credit card declined or running out of clean clothes to wear. While you're away from home, take precautions to safeguard yourself and your slippery lemons. Welcome to Best Choices. This video will tell you how to making travel arrangements, packing your bags, and staying safe while traveling. Now let's get started. Method 1. Making travel arrangements. Number 1. Get plane tickets if you're flying. Especially if you're traveling internationally, your plane tickets may be the most expensive part of your trip. Get your plane tickets first, so you know exactly when you'll be arriving and how long you'll be staying. Be mindful of time zones if you're traveling a longer distance. The arrival or departure times listed reflect the local time at that particular airport. Number 2. Have your vehicle serviced if you're driving. Before you go on a road trip, get the oil changed in your vehicle and have it inspected. Complete any necessary repairs so you know that your vehicle is in top condition for the trip. Let the mechanic know that you are planning a road trip, along with the dates you plan to travel and the distance you're driving. This information will help them determine whether your vehicle is fit for the trip, or if any repairs need to be made. You may also want to contact your insurance company and upgrade your car insurance for your trip. Comprehensive and collision insurance will protect you in the event something happens to your car while you're on the road. Number 3. Make any reservations you need. Make any reservations you need for accommodations or transportation. When you arrive at your destination, you will likely need a place to spend the night. If you're flying, you may also want to rent a car or become familiar with the local public transportation system. If you need any passes for public transportation, try to get them before you arrive at your destination. That way you can go straight to your hotel. Make sure you are appropriately licensed and insured if you plan to rent a car at your destination. If you're traveling to another country, you may need to get an international driving license. Number 4. Get travel insurance. Get travel insurance for longer or more expensive trips. If you have homeowners or renters insurance, your policy will likely cover lost or damaged belongings. You can also purchase additional coverage to cover expenses you may incur as the result of a cancelled or delayed flight. Credit card companies often provide travel insurance. However, you may have to use your credit card to purchase plane tickets or reserve accommodations to get the coverage. If you're traveling abroad, check your health insurance to make sure it will cover you if you need to seek medical treatment in another country. If it doesn't, purchasing supplemental health insurance for the trip is a good idea. Number 5. Apply for a passport or visa. Apply for a passport or visa, if necessary. If you're traveling to another country, you'll likely need a passport. Apply several months in advance to make sure you have it for your trip. To travel to some countries, you may also need a tourist visa. Visit the website of your country's embassy or consulate in your destination country for more information about the documentation you'll need. If you plan to take with you any prescription or over-the-counter drugs, check to make sure those drugs are legal in the country you plan to visit. Number 6. Let family members or friends know your basic itinerary. At least a few people you know and trust should have a basic idea of where you're going to be and what you're going to be doing. Give them details you already have, such as your flight numbers and the name and contact information for your hotel or other accommodations. This doesn't mean you can't be spontaneous or change travel plans on the fly. Just make sure at least one person back home is aware of where you are, especially if you're traveling alone. Number 7. Arrange for a pet or house sitter. If you have pets that won't be traveling with you, make sure they are fed and looked after while you're gone. If you plan to be gone for more than a week, it's also a good idea to have someone look in on your house periodically. 
If you are using a kennel or other service, call and check availability as soon as your travel dates are set. If you leave this to the last minute, you may have a hard time getting the services you need. If you plan to be gone for two weeks or more, go to the postal service and arrange to have your mail held until you return, unless you have someone regularly checking your mail. A stuffed mailbox is an advertisement to thieves that no one is home. Number 8. Let your bank or credit card companies. Let your bank or credit card companies know you'll be traveling. If you plan to use credit or debit cards on your trip, call the customer service number listed on the back of your cards and provide the dates you'll be traveling and where you'll be. Otherwise, charges may be considered fraudulent and denied. This is especially important if you're traveling to another country. Many banks and credit card companies will automatically lock your account if the card is used in another country. Ideally, you should only take one or two cards with you on your trip. Leave any other cards you have at home. This minimizes the risk to you if your wallet is lost or stolen. Number 9. Collect contact information for hotels and airlines. Put contact information for hotels and airlines in your phone. It's possible you'll run into a problem and not have access to Wi-Fi. If you program the numbers into your phone, you won't have to worry about not being able to access a website to find the contact information. If you're traveling to another country, get the address and phone number for your home country's nearest embassy or consulate there. Put that information in your phone as well, so you'll always have it with you. Number 10. Make copies of all important documents. Copy the front and back of identification and insurance documents. If you lose the originals, you can use the copies to re-establish your identity and get back home. Make copies of any medical documentation or prescriptions as well. Place your copies in a zippered bag and pack them in a different location than your original documents. For example, if you have your original documents in a purse or carry-on bag, pack your copies in your suitcase. Did this video help you? Let's comment below, yes or no. Method 2. Packing your bags. Number 1. Choose light, versatile clothing. Choose light, versatile clothing that you can layer. Thinner garments take up less space in your suitcase and can be layered. This way you'll be prepared for most types of weather. Go with easy care fabrics that don't wrinkle easily or require dry cleaning. Unless your trip will involve outdoor winter activities, such as skiing or snowboarding, avoid packing heavy, bulky clothing. If a winter coat is necessary, wear it while traveling rather than packing it in your bag. If you're traveling internationally, be mindful of local customs and traditions that may differ from your own. Some countries may necessitate a more modest appearance than you're used to, particularly if you are a woman or present as feminine. Number 2. Plan your wardrobe for each day of your trip. If you pack whole outfits rather than individual items of clothing, you won't have to worry about running out of things to wear. Choose clothing in the same color family so you don't have to pack multiple shoes and accessories. Choose your wardrobe based on what you plan to do, leaving anything else at home. For example, suppose you're going to the beach and plan to spend the majority of your time on the shore. You might bring several swimsuits, but you wouldn't bring any formal wear. Dress as inconspicuously as possible so you don't stand out as a tourist. If you're traveling to another country, research local customs so you can better blend in. Check local weather forecasts a few days before you leave, and make any necessary adjustments to your wardrobe. Number 3. Roll your garments in your bag. Folding takes up more space, and your clothing will end up more wrinkled. Rolling your garments keeps them secure and reduces wrinkles. Rolled garments also take up less space in your suitcase, allowing you to pack more items. Pack heavier items towards the bottom, with your clothes and lighter items on top. If you're packing shoes in your suitcase, place them with the soles out so they won't dirty your clothes. Roll your socks in your shoes to save space in your suitcase and keep your shoes from losing their shape. Number 4. 
Pack medical and first aid supplies. Most places you travel, you'll have access to first aid supplies and over-the-counter drugs if you need them. However, having a basic first aid kit with you means you won't have to waste time hunting for supplies when you need them. If you take prescription medicine, have your doctor write you a prescription for the generic version of the drug, if available before you leave. If you lose your medication, you should be able to get that prescription filled at a nearby pharmacy. Number 5. Separate documents and items you'll need. Separate documents and items you'll need for your return home. Put return tickets, your house keys, and anything else related to your return in a separate plastic bag. Include a small amount of cash as well, in case you need it. Stow the bag in a safe place. Don't take these things with you when you're out and about. Leave them in your hotel room or locked in a safe at the hotel or hostel where you're staying. Number 6. Include a laundry bag in your suitcase. Many hotels provide a small plastic bag for laundry, but bringing your own will make things easier on your return. Lay it flat on top of your clothes and other items to keep things from shifting during travel. Once you reach your destination, put clothes you've worn in the bag. That will keep them off the floor and contained, helping lessen the risk you leave something behind. When you return home, you don't have to sort through your suitcase to gather your laundry. Did this video help you? Let's comment below, yes or no. Method 3. Staying safe while traveling. Number 1. Check in with someone at home. Check in with someone at home if you're traveling to a dangerous destination. Some areas aren't safe for all travelers, or could put you at risk. Arrange a scheduled text or call each day with a close friend or family member so they know you're safe. If you miss a check-in, the person will know that something has happened to you and can alert the proper authorities. You might also consider this if you're traveling alone, even if you're going to a relatively safe area. The person you choose should be someone who is responsible, calm, and generally capable of handling a search for you, if necessary. If you're engaging in adventurous activities on your trip, such as hiking through a rainforest or going on a safari, let them know when you're going and approximately where you'll be. Call or text when you've returned from your adventure. Number 2. Secure your valuables close to your body. Pickpockets often target tourists, who may be distracted or disoriented by their surroundings. Particularly for international travel, use a money belt or other garment to secure your identification documents, money, and credit cards. When you're out and about, don't take anything with you that you won't need. For example, if you're going to the beach, you might take a small amount of cash and some personal identification. However, you would have no need for most electronic devices, or for your credit or debit cards. If you're staying in a hotel or hostel, use the safe deposit box to store valuables you're not carrying on your person. Keep copies of all your important documents in the safe, as well as a small amount of cash. You might also keep an extra credit card or prepaid card just in case. Number 3. Be cautious when using public Wi-Fi. Many countries have public Wi-Fi, but the network is insecure and vulnerable to hackers. If you must use public Wi-Fi, avoid accessing secure accounts, such as through a banking or credit card app. Set strong passwords for any electronic devices you plan to take with you, so they can't be accessed by anyone but you. Many hotels have Wi-Fi available for guests. You typically have to enter a password to access these networks, but some are more secure than others. Ask about encryption on the network, and how often the access password is changed. Number 4. Avoid disclosing your location on social media. You may want to share photos and information with your friends immediately. However, posts indicating that you are away can make your home a target for thieves. Generally, it's best to wait until you return from your vacation to post pictures or any other information about your trip. Never post specific details about your itinerary on social media, including the dates you're going to be gone. Number 5. Keep an emergency kit in your car.
Keep an emergency kit in your car if you're driving. An emergency kit means you're prepared if you get a flat or have another mishap on the road. Even if you have roadside assistance through your insurance or an automotive club, it may take a long time for that assistance to arrive. You may also end up in an area where you can't get a cell phone signal. You can buy inexpensive roadside kits online or at discount stores that have all the tools and equipment you'll need. Familiarize yourself with the kit so you know how to use everything that's in it. Did this video help you? Let's comment below, yes or no.